All right, we'd like to welcome uh, Santos Bonacci here at Magpie House, and he's going to be covering some information of, uh, of recent events where um, he was uh, taken into custody and what happened from there and where it's going to go into the future. So what would you like to say about that? Well, uh, let's begin by saying that um, the uh, incident re uh, involves uh, non-payment of tolls and um, traffic fines. So it's a civil matter and um, it's been ongoing for probably about seven years since I realised that the whole thing is unconstitutional, number one, if we want to take it from the literal sense, and it's also unlawful, as in universal law. So what really happened with me was a, a great philosophical change. You know, I was going along with the system, paying everything, everything was always paid up to date mm -hmm. and everything like that. But uh, as happens when you grow and, and become <coughs> enlightened, you learn things and sometimes the things you learn are a big surprise. And I looked into how government works and uh, how the whole system works and uh, I realised for myself that uh, much of what's going on in so-called government is fraudulent, it's unlawful, uh, it's even unconstitutional, you know, which mm. is their documents, it's not my documents, you know, I don't really care about legalities. I, I am concerned with law, you know, I believe that we are divine creatures and that we, we are law because we, uh, we fulfil what is good if we are mature and loving. We fulfil the law of the universe, we can't disobey it and only a fool would disobey you know, laws that, uh, that are natural like gravity and things yeah. like that and killing another being because, uh, you know, I mean, this suggests that um, uh, we, will part we are participating in something that will must uh, return to us, sometimes with interest. Mm -hmm. So going back to, say, 2007, 2008, I opened my eyes and realised the, the fraud that was involved with um, tolls and things like that and taxes and external authorities and things like that. So um, let's, let's uh, tackle the whole thing about tolls from the legal... What about, well, what about the, um, the Channel 7 crew that turned up in the, the car park in front of the court and, and she was asking the question, well, we all, all, of, all of us pay the, the tolls, right? And why, what makes you exempt? Yeah, look, I could have handled that in a myriad of other ways. Yeah. Why I chose to answer the way I did, uh, well, you know, um, you that's what happens. For one yeah, thing. yeah. <laughs> look, I didn't expect there to be media there, so uh, I was, didn't have any even any thoughts yeah. prepared. So, but um, let's look at it from just the uh, legal point of view, which really um, only slightly interests me because I'm living in the lawful. Uh, the, um, the Constitution, for instance, we have a, a Constitution, Section 92 of the Constitution, and the annotated uh, version will give you the true interpretation of this uh, section of the uh, Constitution. On the imposition of uniform duties of customs, trade, commerce and intercourse among the states, whether by means of internal carriage or ocean, navigation shall be absolutely free. Mm. Now, this is also uh, supported in the Bill of Rights, 1688, and we are under the Bill of Rights as yeah. servants of the Queen of the Commonwealth of Australia. Mm. And uh, on page uh, 868 in the annotated version of the Constitution, it will interpret that the only way it should be interpreted and it is unconstitutional for any kind of toll in the Commonwealth. Uh, then we have the Magna Carta mm -hmm. and um, in uh, for section 41 of the Magna Carta, all merchants may safely and securely by land or by water under right and ancient customs and without any evil exactions. Exactions would be tolls. Mm. So, and then of course um, the, the whole um, concept of um, enclosing certain roadways and forcing citizens to, to pay is against the Privacy Act, if you want to go legal again. 
the Privacy Act 1988, they invade our privacy. Mm. And so when the, um, the reporter asked me that question, I mean, uh, if I had time to think about it, I would um, say that um, I am exempt and so are all Australians. I'm not doing this for me as a selfish exercise in mm. uh, escaping any responsibility. I am a full, responsible, lawful member of the community. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and so we are all exempt. It is an offence to all of us that we live in a common wealth, i.e. we commonly own the wealth. We, it is our wealth. The roads are built by we, the people. Therefore, um, we have already paid for them. Yeah. And, and so the big question, George, is this. A lot of people say uh, one um, woman uh, tried earnestly to diss me and to call me a, a toll dodger and so that other taxpayers have to foot the bill. This is how erroneous and ignorant um, the masses have become. That they will not, you know, do a little bit of study. I've got a few notes here on a bit of paper, you know, and, yeah. and these are just... Well, I would have said, you know, um, I've said it for years, actually. Uh, nobody asked my consent whether these roads should be built uh, and the taxpayer, I believe, footed the bill and then they're double dipping by charging us a toll. And that would be a brilliant answer. Um, there's, there's, there's also the practical answer, and that is how do governments raise money for any of the infrastructure that we have in the Commonwealth? Well, easy. Treasury notes. When you borrow fiat currency from private banks, i.e. the Reserve Bank, owned by the Rothschilds and perhaps the Windsors and maybe the Rockefellers, well, we are using notes in fraud, intellectual property, which is not ours, mm. and only compounds the national debt. In um, 1915, the Australia, the Australian government, the federal government, built the East-West Railway. Big, massive enterprise. And how did they raise um, money for that? Well, they, by the utilisation of government notes. And um, these government notes are treasury notes. Mm -hmm. They're non-debt they're non notes. Mm -hmm. And so they built the whole railway, and this is a great example for Australians. We, we forget, you see, because now corporations come in, um, you know, make, make a piece of railway or a, a road, and then privately charge tolls and who benefits? People think that we're paying tolls and as a tax so that we can have more roads. This is totally erroneous. The money goes into the coffers of private individuals. Yeah. Probably only about four or five people benefit in Australia, mm -hmm. or four or five families mm -hmm. benefit directly from tollways. And it doesn't even solve the traffic problem. What it, what it takes away is uh, it, it does it for a short time, but then it attracts a whole lot of uh, more traffic and pollution, and guess what? The, the government gets a landfall from all the, uh, the petrol tax as well. So you know, they've got plenty of um, revenue, um, but where does it go? Absolutely. The federal government has the right to issue money without debt. They didn't raise, it, they did not get any money from taxes mm. for that railway line. Mm -hmm. This is a great Australian example. No taxes were used. They printed, they have the right to print debt-free treasury money so that we can build all the infrastructure we need. The other thing about income tax is it's very different to uh, sell, uh, wage tax. You see, the concept of paying tax on the wage is ludicrous. Income is a different creature altogether. That, ha that has to do with, you know, um, uh, profits made commercially on the stock market. Get, um, investments and other such things. But a wage mm. to be taxed, I mean, it's totally uh, ludicrous. We have a, an out of control corporatised government, and people are not aware of that mm. because they're still voting, they're still participating, they're still members or citizens of this, this, this government, mm. and so they're unawares of what's really going on. Um, in the Australian Constitution, section 51, uh, um, 13... Is that 1900 or 1901? Or 
Look, I'm not sure okay. about that. It might be the 1901. Yeah. Okay, so fi section 51, 13. Uh, the states, being sovereign states within the Federation, have the ability to fully utilise its capacity for credit creation and issue money without debt for the creation of infrastructure. Mm. That's the state government. Mm -hmm. And the federal government has that right. And um, that would be the kind of money um, that raises um, value or revenue for any kind of infrastructure. That's how it's built. And uh, this is the thing that needs to be uh, known and exposed, I would say, because uh, through dumbing down through the education system, a lot of Australians, and Australians are not aware of this. Well, don't, get the, don't they get those funds from overseas loans, which have to be paid back with interest, uh, and it's like chasing your own tail. They, they, they never actually pay off the debt and gets us into more and more debt, uh, and, the, and the debt once you spread it out amongst the population, it's a significant chunk for each one of us. Um, that's, that's what I, I um, came across. Exactly. Yeah. The major reason why, I, why we are in debt and are getting more and more in debt by compounding that is by using reserve currency. You see, they don't call it money. It's not money. Yeah. Because there is no money. It's legal tender or currency. And both of those, using them, is fraud. If you want to live lawfully and responsibly, you use those, mon those notes any time, it's fraud. Besides, it compounds the national debt. This is why when you get a statement from your utility company, there's a, there's a typical statement, that is not a bill. Mm. They cannot bill you because we, we live in this, in this structure, this uh, system that we live under, we, have a pre, we live in a prepaid system. So the lawful way to pay would be with lawful promissory notes. Mm -hmm. And those, that legal tender or currency, since it's not gold back and has no real value, is a fraudulent way of paying. Now, for instance, how many Australians know that these are utility statements? And the way to pay those is not with cash. That's fraudulent. And of course, again, the problem of compounding the debt by doing so. Here is a little stub here, and this is supposed to be, um, many people have used this successfully by, um, uh, by depositing that in the proper manner into their bank account and then using those funds to uh, pay for the utility bills. So they've already given you the, the way to pay, and that's here. Besides, um, uh, many uh, people, lawful people, have learned how to play, pay these by accepting them for value. So what's supposed to be done in the lawful system is you're supposed to, perhaps in red pen, uh, diagonally put uh, a couple of lines across the page and you put all your lawful details in here because we are exempt. So you give them your exemption numbers which would be this number here on your birth certificate. This is what makes us exempt. Now the point being this, um, uh, George, is for me I don't see any value in this because it's only a piece of paper. But the government does. Mm -hmm. Why do they allow um, entities such as uh, banks to purchase these off their registrars mm -hmm. um, at around about $6 million each? That's the average going price for a birth certificate because what they do is they securitise these. These become securitised bonds mm -hmm. and floated on the stock market. By the time you retire... This has generated six billion, on average, six billion dollars per capita yeah. per, uh, for the entities that own them. So now I don't, I don't care about that. That doesn't interest me. But that is a fact that these have value. So if they have value, mm -hmm. why can't we use them to offset any debt incurred?
by the legal person. Yeah, what you're advocating is get the bill paid out of the Treasury, right? Um, but do we advocate that as a practical way for the common man to, uh, to run their household? I mean, um, shall we all start doing that or is it, uh, has, has it got some, uh, uh, it didn't, does it need to be very carefully uh, scrutinised to make sure that we can do it en masse? I would say that. I would suggest that people begin their, their journey in uh, researching how how to pay correctly. Um, you see, I've used these, these, this technology and this, these techniques and they have dishonourably um, not accepted my payment. So the reason being is because they can get away with it. So I would suggest, I'm not advocating doing any of this because um, you know, I don't wish to participate in any kind of fraud and I only wish to be a lawful, responsible individual. And so, but I would suggest that people open their eyes and learn about the process of how to pay correctly because the other way is fraud anyway. Mm. Yeah, but um, in practical terms, is it a good idea to fight the system or is it better to create something new and make the old system irrelevant? That's, a, that's quoting uh, Buckminster Fuller. Uh, that's what he advocates for, for, for changing the system. Uh, just step out of it right? and maybe there's some practicalities there as well. Absolutely. Yes, there is. And when you step out of it, um, I would make sure to uh, you know, uh, understand all the, um, the process of stepping out and doing it gradually uh, lawfully and honourably because, you know, sometimes uh, it can um, uh, not completely uh, have effect. For instance, I, even though I um, attempted to pay lawfully the correct way, um, in the end, the, you know, I, I invited some trouble. Now, that's not saying that uh, that will happen to um, anyone who follows the path that I do. Um, in my particular case is uh, individual and unique. And so <coughs> um, the way that uh, people can go about uh, extracting themselves th from the system would be slowly and surely mm -hmm. and um, to research the, the fraud in it. Because why would you want to participate in anything that is inherently fraudulent. Mm -hmm. So what I was suggesting by, <coughs> by um, explaining how this document has value, to me it doesn't have value, but it must have value to someone because it's a securitised bond. Mm -hmm. And is that value worthless? Because if we're going to court and we're having to pay and that the system is forcing us to pay in a fraudulent matter, well then this doesn't have any value at all then. Well we may as, may as well totally ignore this and bring it to the uh, conscious uh, understanding of all our brothers and sisters in this country so that we can expose the fact that um, uh, well we were, we were supposedly we're supposed to have some benefits from this. In fact you know you do, you get benefits, privileges and services but you don't get rights. Hmm. So in order to reserve our universal rights, uh, we would probably have to detach ourselves 100% from this. You know, now how to do that is, um, you know, is a uh, is a procedure that needs to be followed, and many people have done it in honour and extracted themselves from the system. Other people, on the other hand. Uh, thinking more in terms of legal, practical ways of uh, yeah. managing their lives. They have learnt the rules. They have learnt all the rules that, that go along with any association with the birth certificate and citizenship. And they have beaten the system by applying its own rules against it. And now that's, I'd, that's tough work, though. That's going tough legal, work. Um, uh, uh, where, where, where we've come from is... Uh, uh, 
we we need teachers rather than martyrs. We don't want to go down with you know trying to fight something which is already broken type type thing. Well, why try and fix it in, in a way? Uh, and uh, so instead of uh, putting giving it more energy by fighting it, we can sidestep it perhaps. Um, but we need to get a, a plan and a, um, a practical way to do that. Uh, and I, I guess perhaps we've both done a fair bit of research on that and it, it might be uh, along the lines of, um, well, perhaps the big city environment is not the ideal environment for trying to do that. Perhaps not. Look, my, my situation certainly brought to the attention um, the, the issue of tolls and, um, and fines mm -hmm. to the awareness of the public. Now, obviously, a lot of the public will absolutely um, uh, not uh, find that what I did was, um, was, let's say, good because of the way they've been educated. But it is a great opportunity for everyone to um, look... Bring it out into the open. Bring it out into the open, yeah. you know. If you want to live legally and you want to um, give value to, to the system, and uh, operate in person under the juridic person because this, this, this generates a person in the system. It's not the, the, the living man. I'm a living man. A person is, is also a corporation. Now, some people know how to interact with this, with this instrument and they know how to get the, extract their benefits from it. Now, let's say that most Australians will be happy to uh, go along with that and they don't want to extract themselves totally from the system and live totally and independently free from it, fine, well then they should know the rules. And the rules are, uh, for instance, as I've just said, um, the Constitution just disallows tolls, um, the Magna Carta, the, um, the Bill of Rights, uh, the Privacy Act, and, and the question of who pays for the infrastructure, well, we have a treasury. Mm. And the government has the right to generate the money with value, without extracting taxes, to create all the infrastructure that it needs. But wouldn't that mean disconnecting from the international monetary system? It would have to involve that. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. And uh, that is the biggest problem and issue facing mankind today. The fact that all nations and all individuals have been uh, made um, debtors to the one and only creditor on the planet, which is the, either the monetary, uh, International Monetary Fund or the World Bank, both owned by private families very, very exceedingly rich and wealthy private families. The likes of the Windsors, otherwise known as the Guelphs, the Saxe-Coburg mm -hmm. and all of these well-to-do oligarchic families. Mm -hmm. And so if, um, if Australians really did their research and realised that that is what's really going on, then they would realise that we are exempt from all duties, taxes, yeah. fines, tolls, etc. Yeah. Because we have value far exceeding anything on a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, even the people that um, benefit from those sort of systems, uh, in a way, they're, they're our brothers and sisters. Isn't the, uh, the peaceful way to, 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 to try and get through all this, um, uh, which is building up into an extinction event from what, I, from what we can see, is to um, spread the awareness and have the, um, the information out there uh, in a kind of gentle way. You know, if you try and hammer it into people, uh, it, you're just going to get resistance. And perhaps eventually they will come around. Um, I, don't, I don't see that as an, as a, an overnight process. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work to do that. I always live hopeful, George. Um, I know you do. Yeah, I'm very positive. Yeah, well, I'm very positive. It's not overnight, sure, sure. But um, look, this this event made national news. I'm grateful for that. I mm. do not care about my reputation. And uh, if they want to slander me, as um, 
as uh, Harold's son uh, did, um, that's fine. You know, yeah, the, you're not un unemployed. You're the principal of uh, the Universal Truth School, just like I'm the principal of Yoga Flex Yoga School. <laughs> exactly. I think that was in answer to um, the judge asking, "What job do you do?" I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know. Of course, uh, unemployed it sounds so derogatory. I mean, I am in. I am working mm. all day long. I do work. Yeah. You know, a job just over broke does not suit me, but I do work of value for millions of people on this planet. That's recognised. Yeah, that is recognised. So that's fine, you know, we needn't bother about that kind of slander. But what I mean is, I mean, obviously the Herald Sun, which is a corporate uh, journal uh, and, and um, vying uh, and um, promoting the, the interests of corporatism, they're not going to give me a good rap. Of course I'm going to be a toll dodger. Well, what I stand for is to teach Australians how to be truly, truly free in a lawful manner and to live responsibly, to be awakened and to, and to be learned and enlightened about how the law really works. For we are, we are exempt simply by our value. Yeah. Well, there's two examples in the, in the hills uh, last year, 2013, which should have made it obvious that people are not in control of their communities. And, and one is um, uh, the installation of McDonald's in Tacoma. Uh, you know, that was against 90 plus per, uh, percent of the population. Um, and uh, 100,000 signatures, the trouble is with the petition, it's only petite, it, it doesn't have substance. Uh, uh, perhaps stronger, uh, action would be required, and the other the other example was the, in, the installation of a, a whole new set of towers for, purely for the smart grid. Right, uh, they've gone up everywhere uh, without our consent. Good point. This is one of the most fundamental points. They need our consent. Mm. A lot of this stuff that's going on, this corporate stuff, is going on without our consent. Purported requirements to pay tolls fail pursuant to contract law as there is rarely an absolute acceptance by commuters. This is for tolls. Mm. That is, there has not been an unequivocal acceptance of all the terms of an offer. Mm. The whole community, commuters at large, have not accepted the terms of the offer of this private corporation which mm. is charging us tolls. So an absolute acceptance is required before a binding contract can be formed. Now, whether people um, respect the Bible or not, in Matthew 18, 16, it talks about the ultimate law because in the end, um, these people, the, the judiciary and the, the justice system and um, the court system, they do use the Bible as the fundamental base of all of their laws. Mm -hmm. So one of the laws in Matthew 18, 16 is to um, have one or more witnesses. You see, so um, <clears throat> where have they, where have they um, subjected their process to all of these laws? They have, they have not. You know, they have bypassed law. They've concocted um, some legalities and bedaffled um, the, the masses because, the, well, they're busy working and, and being distracted, so they're not necessarily studiously um, uh, a applying the law or, or learning the law for themselves. Mm -hmm. so, so in the case of two witnesses, when, when um, a, a corporation brings you to court, as in my case, where are their two witnesses against me? Because they would need, they would need a, a very high claim to come against me. They don't have witnesses. Well, they have a barrister on the case. Yeah. You noticed that? Yeah. yeah. So they're taking it seriously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very seriously. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, they are, um, they are basically trampling underfoot all of the, these laws that I've brought out, the, con the Constitution, and etc., and the, process, uh, the processes that have been put in place for us to have a prepaid exempt system. 
So if that is so, that the system works that way, well, why don't we take advantage of these benefits? I personally do not because I don't want to participate in, in the legal system. Um, you know, I want to extract myself. Like, you know, we, this is our philosophy. You know, that's, ideologically, that's, that's the points that I brought to the table. In all of, the, in all of this case, ultimately, people will come away with a philosophical, ideological point of view. And that is that we are valuable and that they extract our value from, through their system, by two-dimensional pieces of paper. So if they really consider that we have value, which they do, otherwise they would not have registered one of these. They would not have bothered with a birth certificate, you see. Mm. And this is why, um, <clears throat> this is why in hospital, um, the hospitals are charged you know, with the, the, the task of getting parents to register their children. And they get a spotting fee of a couple of thousand dollars for doing that. You see, it's very profitable to the, to the, the hospitals. And so, you know, all of this is going on. What they create is they create a juridic person because with the placenta that the parents leave behind in hospital and the DNA, they, they create an original copy of that person, that cargo that has come in the ship. The ship is, 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 the, hosp is the placenta that comes into the dock, which is the hospital. Mm. And so what they issue is this certificate. And, and there is value behind it because, well, they're doing it. You know, they, they, they're going out of their way to make people a person a corporate person, because there must be value. Well, there is. Mm -hmm. And if that is such, if it's so, well then, we should be able to um, use that value to offset any of these fines and whatever. And because the, because the government now becomes the trustee of that estate, so this is the Santo Bonacci estate, um, the government is the trustee, they have the responsibility to handle the bookkeeping, discharge the debt, and settle the account. It's not up to the beneficiary. Mm. I would be the beneficiary, I suppose. I mean, I don't particularly like any of the benefits, but if I'm going to assume that role, well then, I, this is what we should be doing. We should be going to court and saying, well, I as the beneficiary, I instruct you or authorise you as trustee and authorised party to discharge the debt. What are you looking at me for? So the question would be for anyone facing a similar situation as me, um, go to them and say, uh, okay, well, how do I pay? Mm. And if they instruct you with reserved notes, they are in fraud, in breach of trust, and you are going to be in fraud. If they instruct you community service, that's still another form of slavery. Whatever they instruct you will be erroneous unless they instruct you to create a lawful promissory note. Mm -hmm. that, that's not my advice. That, was, that would not be me suggesting to do that, but that's what they should be doing yeah, if, check. if they have any honour. Yeah. 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 You see my little, uh, our little diagram uh, where um, the government... Is, is supposed to be the trustee and, uh, to the people and the people, again, the beneficiary, it, it, it appears as though it's been reversed and the government is both the executor... Uh, executor. executor. <laughs> executor, yeah, right. Yeah, um, that makes sense and, better the first way, actually. And yeah. beneficiary, and we are the trustees uh, and we're acting as slaves in that system uh, and the cost of government is just skyrocketing. This is breach of trust. This is what we need to share with one and all mm -hmm. to understand that's breach of trust. They've flipped the roles around. So they're dragging us into court. And this is the Bar Society, by the way. The Bar Society are responsible for all of this. And, um, you know, that is not to say that all the members therein are, are corrupt. Certainly the judges that I saw were um, exceptionally good gentlemen, you know, and... Uh, 
I've got a hunch that they, their interest is to, um, to have support from the outside, enlightened Australians, like the ones that turned up, like yourself and Mossen, in court um, on, April, on um, January 29th, in my matter. Mm. And when, you know, I mean, the judge was just exceptionally favourable to my standing because I, um, he would have gathered that I know who I am and that I know how the system works. And he, would, he was uh, obviously, um, by his actions and by uh, having me released on bail, etc., um, approving of you know, a clean-up of the system. There are many fine magistrates and judges that would love the support from good, lawful, responsible Australians to change the system. It only needs a little bit of tweaking mm -hmm. and um, exposure is what will do it. Mm -hmm. If they've flipped the role and made us trustee, that's breach of trust and this is a dishonourable government and a dishonourable system and it needs to be corrected. If they're not going to do their job honourably, out. And we can put in some people that, um, that will respect the, the system, uh, the the system how it's supposed to work lawfully. Mm, yeah, my, my perception is, is, is if you um, help the magistrate with, with your standing, the magistrate will love you and, and give you what's required because it helps his job, basically. And their job is what? To protect and secure property. Mm. So he was protecting my property, which is me because I made that known that I am a living man. Even though they changed the jurisdiction by various tricks on me, mm. I still maintain that I do not consent to the jurisdiction of the corporate person. I do not wish to be, be acting as that person, Santo Bonacci, in the legal sense. Mm. I wish to be me, the living man, Santo Bonacci, in the common law sense, because I am known by that name also. Mm. So. So I think that when, when um, grown responsible individuals turn up in court rather than incompetent, lost at sea, um, insane children, which they are administering because, you know, well, you have to look after children, um, rather than uh, uh, going to court in, in, uh, in such a way, um, we will absolutely make the job of the trustees, the public servants, easier because all they need to do is protect property. Mm -hmm. And that's why man made government. Government did not make man. So we made it. We instructed what to do. Mm -hmm. And it protects our property and secures that property. That's the primary function of government. Otherwise, it's useless. And so I believe that in the best way possible, my property was protected. And I would say that suggest that the judge respected the fact that I was kidnapped and um, that my property was abused because what was really being looked for was Santo Bonacci, the corporation. They were looking for... Um, the corporate person to, um, to discharge that debt. And so it was a case of mistaken identity, which is what I did explain to the judge in the first hearing, <laughs> that it was a, a case of mistaken identity. Now, he knew exactly what I meant. Yeah. So, look, uh, once again, you know, I'd like to repeat that I'm not advocating follow this way, follow that way. I'm just bringing to the attention of people mm. what's really going on. And I'm happy to offer my case and my example um, for all Australians and all people on this planet. Mm. And hopefully I can help them to open their eyes and look into the matter a bit further mm. and to find that we have we have all our rights intact, but we need to reserve them and we need to um, yeah. make sure that those rights are maintained. If we um, settle for less than that, we will be getting services, privileges and benefits 
from the government. Now these are inferior to rights. A benefit can be you can be slammed in jail. A service is they can come and pick you up and take you there. Uh, a privilege is, you know, enjoying the horrible jail food that they offer you, and that's a privilege. They keep you alive with that rubbish. Mm. You know, that's what services, privileges and benefits are. And unfortunately, this is what Australians have accepted mm. due to ignorance of law. So what I wish to do is just encourage one and all, whether you, you understand or don't understand what it is that I'm doing, to look into the matter. I've given some examples of law and legalities. The Constitution forbids tolls, um, etc. Do some research. Yeah, their, their role is also to protect human rights. And uh, I guess uh, when you step into a court, and you might ask the question, are my human rights protected? And if there's silence, uh, I guess the prerogative is there to, to just leave. It, it, it's not valid. Yeah, very difficult to do in administrative um, commercial courts, which is the court yeah. that, um, that handled my matter. But if you were to take it to uh, the High Court, which is the Queen's Bench in Australia, um, you take the matter straight to there, you can, you can do this, this process, and which is the lawful, again, the lawful process. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, we still are under common law in this country and we should have avail ourselves of that right. Well, if we um, take the, the idea that if we truly cared for each other, would we really need the um, mosaic of economic and political, religious or military or industrial, technological, social, constitutional, moral, etc., etc., solutions? Uh, isn't this obviously a, um, a spirituality crisis where we, we don't care for each other? Absolutely it is, George. You hit, it, you hit the nail right on the head. It is a spiritual crisis. Um, <clears throat> let's, give, let's give one example. I said this to the policeman that um, at, at the uh, Dandenong um, uh, Magistrates Court there, I said to them all, I said, in general, people respect a policeman and a woman because they've sworn an oath to serve mm. and protect. And you can see how caring they are uh, when they go out. For instance, there was when I was in um, in the cells during that nine days. There was that case of the um, the young teenager that raped a woman along the uh, railway line. Remember that one? And uh, the police were there, mm. right? Because of course the woman would have complained and. Um, uh, reported it, and what do the police men and women who serve to protect, uh, uh, swore to serve and protect, do? Well, they go out and show care. You see, you, you see the way they um, um, rescue someone. For instance, someone's lost. Yeah, in, they in, risk their own lives. They they'll, risk they'll their own lives for us if they if they have to in the in the uh, in the duty in the service. This is what you're talking about, caring. This is the yeah. spiritual side of these yeah. individuals. But then when you see them working in their police officer capacity, mm. now a police officer is a different creature to yeah. a policeman. They are policy enforcers and they go out, they serve for profit. Mm. They don't serve for protection. Yeah. And they make a lot of profit for their masters. And those masters would be, well, Victoria Police is registered in New York. It has an ABN number. I may have that with me in my papers here, but it has an ABN number and it's doing business. Mm. And so those police officers, when they're giving you a fine for doing exceeding the, the traffic limit by three kilometres an hour, um, that is revenue collecting. And that is a crisis of, of spirituality, like you said, because that's not caring. Mm. Those are mothers who are struggling with children, yeah. who are taking a second and a third job, those are fathers who care about their families and want to succeed and have their, 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 their homes paid off. All of these fines and bills, there's no injured party if you do 3Ks over the limit. Why was it that 50 years ago, I remember when I was young and 
and if I did five k's over the limit or five mile an hour over the limit, the policeman says, look, I'll give you a warning, you know, slow down, have a nice day. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it carries responsibility just because uh, you've got your freedom doesn't mean you go out and you, you rape everyone sort of thing. You see, um, I yeah. see this dichotomy everywhere. I see it with yeah. policemen, I see it with politicians, I see it with mm. all of our brothers yeah. on this planet, that they're living this dichotomy. There's this caring part of them that they cannot extinguish, and that is the spiritual fire. It's a divine fire that we have in us. Mm. That is what makes us human. But then there's this other side of the human nature, very animalistic, that is actually can go and actually kill people for no other reason than they're, that they uh, join an army or, or whatever, or a policeman that just tases someone because they're running off. Mm -hmm. Zzz, tase them, they fall to the ground and die. Mm -hmm. Why is this going on? Well, because of the division in the world, yeah. because we're divided. He's the baddie, I'm the goodie. Um, he's a Jew and he's a Christian. So there's got to be friction between these two bodies. All is one. There is no Jew. There is no Muslim on the higher plane. On the higher plane, it is all a oneness. It would be like a couple of leaves on a tree having, having um, you know... Uh, hypothetically speaking, a, a, an argument, you know. Well, every leaf of every tree is connected at the trunk. There's only one trunk per tree. Mm. And so we are like these beautiful individual fluttering leaves in the wind. And so, you know, one's bigger than another one and one says, oh, look at me, I'm greener and more colourful than you. You're all shriveled up and withered. You're about to fall, ha, 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 and blah, blah, blah. This is how the system is structured, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And, and my, my favourite subject, syncretism, is the opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing people how all of this division can be united so easily. Mm -hmm. It's so simply. All is one. Everything is interrelated. Mm -hmm. I am related to you. Now, on this physical level, there is, a, there is a seeming separation. The vortex of your energy body, your Merkaba vehicle, is over there and mine's over here. But the spirit that drives it, like the electricity that drives each and every one of these individual light globes in this room, is one source, Latrobe. And it comes down one line and all of these individual globes are powered by that one source. Well, you and I, we're just like two globes of light, but we're powered by the same source. And whether you're a Muslim or a Jew or a Hindu, it's the same source. Mm. And as the great Wallace, um, uh, William Wallace, I think it was, said, um, the God you believe in may be different to the God I believe in, but the God that created you and the God that created me mm. is the same one God. Well, it seems to me that it's our spiritual spirituality, our divine rights, which is perhaps the true key to our freedom. Um, and we don't have to be denominational. Uh, 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 the, well, as well as the Christian Bible, we could quote the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita or the Koran or, or even the Salicine Prophecy, uh, a New Age book perhaps, uh, as a, a source of um, divine inspiration. Um, and acknowledge the Creator as the only authority as opposed to statutes. Absolutely. So what you're doing now is you are maintaining your divine, universal, individual rights as opposed to having personal privileges, services and benefits. Because that's personal. Yeah. That's, that's your person. That's your partner in crime that was created in the hospital when your parents left the placenta behind and and therefore this this original copy was made from the genuine article you see santo bonacci is the lawful genuine article this is the legal original copy and they make many many copies from this and they make many instruments financial instruments and derivatives from this it's a security 
You know, it's a, it's a bond on the stock market. And so that is a, that is a fact. So either we acknowledge that fact, learn about it, be enlightened about it, and work with it, or we say, hey, I've learnt of this fact and uh, I don't want to participate. I want to have clean hands and don't want to partake in fraud. That's my stance, philosophically, by the way. But to answer your question in short, yes, that's what we need to do. Keep the rights intact. They are individual and universal rights. They exist, whereas personal benefits, privileges and, be and services are what the masses are getting because they don't know the difference. Hmm. And uh, I would bring to, th to the attention of folks the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. There are, um, there are 30, I think there are 30 articles yeah, 30 articles to them. And um, for instance, Article 1, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Now, I'll, I'll go with that. Mm. That's, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Whether, you know, whether people choose to um, besmirch me and to... Um, uh, misunderstand what I'm doing, ultimately, I know what I'm doing. And this is, you know, exactly what I'm doing. Um, here's Article 2. Everyone is entitled to the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind, such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Furthermore, no distinction shall be made on the basis of the political, jurisdictional or international status of the country or territory to which a person belongs, whether it be independent, trust, non-self-governing governing, or under any other limitation of sovereignty. Article 3. Everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. goes on and on and on. <coughs> it, is, you know, it is a tad uh, legal in its nature but it is also a lawful uh, proclamation. Well, it's a declaration. But, mm. uh, but this was drafted in um, <clears throat> 48. And so these are the, these are the sort of things that uh, people need to be aware of. The, our rights, these will always exist mm. because we exist. We are living. Pieces of paper have privileges, benefits and services. So if we act in the capacity of person all the time, we'll get that. We'll get benefits. Jail is a benefit. <coughs> Oppression is a service. Mm -hmm. You know, um, fraudulent government is a privilege that, we, that we're asking for. We vote for it. You know, they repeatedly tell lies and get into office, but we're voting. Mm. You know, well, not me. I've never voted in my life, <laughs> but um, but people are doing this, and so it's insanity. You know, you're getting the same result all the time. If these irresponsible politicians are acting irresponsibly, they need to be removed. It's simple as that. Well, they're our public servants. We created the government. They did not create us. So I think it's time to act. We act in a lawful, responsible manner, uh, once being enlightened, once upon being enlightened, we cannot but act in a responsible, lawful manner. This is what I'm showing and trying to um, teach one and all that it's time now, it's time now to take back the power. And it's not going to be done by force. Government has a police force. They don't have a police power because they have no power. Mm. The power lies within our breasts, each individual one of us. Once we realise that united and cohesively, we will stand and we will have a nation debt free and how to do it, how simple it is to do it, we will have these things. Mm. Yeah, if I quote um, uh, Bruce Lipton, uh, we, we played his, uh, uh, a movie of his the other night in a small group. Uh, called Spontaneous Evolution. Beautiful. And 
Uh, he says that the bad news is that, and I, I've changed the wording a bit, the earth is undergoing a pattern of cleansing. All that belong to the old paradigm will be swept away. And he says that the good news is that the earth is undergoing a pattern of cleansing. All that belong to the old paradigm will be swept away. So we can take it uh, as a given that this will happen. This, this is what happens to civilizations uh, over eons of time. Uh, it, it will eventually fall away and something new will, will appear. Uh, and, and, and that new um, appearance will be from the ones who are willing to change. Um, yes, my friend, it. absolutely. Yeah. And I quote scripture. Uh, the Bible, for instance, talks about destruction with flood in the days of Noah. The Bible talks about destruction of fire, the coming destruction of fire. This is speaking, this is speaking of the two elements that are most... <coughs> most destructive and um, purifying in nature. Water, universal solvent. Fire, the universal purifier. If you want to get some clean gold, you subject it to fire, to heat. And all the scurry and all the impurities will come to the top and you will have clean, purified gold. That's what pure means. It's the, the root of the word pure is fire. To purify, to purge purgatory and so this is what the Bible's speaking about mm. it's speaking about how nature gets things done in nature there is a component of destruction but it is not total destruction it is regeneration like a forest mm. a fire sweeps through a forest and you see nothing and then after a couple of months regrowth and so what Bruce Lipton is there saying is, is true. This earth will be destroyed, will be regenerated many, many times. In fact, the great Walter Russell teaches how this is done. Um, planets come from equators of suns. Moons come from equators of planets. And suns are becoming planets, which are becoming suns, which in turn become planets. And this goes on forever and ever as a pulse. Mm. The cycle, but it's not just a cycle, it's a spiral which is rising upwards all the time. It is a spiral. And the yeah. spiral, the root of the word spiral, shares with the same word spirit. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also call it the holy cow. You know, holy cow. <laughs> well, why? Because the spirit... The spirit that is spiralling is actually a toroidal field. And the toroidal field comes from Taurus, the cow. Mm. That's why the bull and the cow is such a significant symbolism in mythology and in all sacred scripture. You know, it's the sacrificial bull, for instance. Because it's the toroidal field which is the spiral, the Holy Spirit. And so when the Bible says that the Word was made flesh, the Word is the whirling spirit. You see, when you add an L to the word word, you get the word world. So we know that the Son of God, the Word of God, the Logos, the Verb, created the world. Yeah, because it's in the Word. And, and this is also sharing the same root as the word whirling because the Holy Spirit, the spiral, is whirling and making vortexes. Every form of energy that you see in the universe, anything you see in the universe, mm. is a whirling vortex. Mm. And in fact, the sun, the, the solar system we live in, it's a vortex. Mm. The sun and the, and the sun's vortex is called the master. And inside its vortex are all the other planets' vortexes. Mm. Saturn's, Jupiter's, the Earth's. The Earth's vortex is so large it actually goes further out than the moon. It's, it goes beyond the moon. And the moon's vortex 
is also large. I guess we would uh, call that the Van Allen belt. And so, and so that vortex of the moon is captured by the Earth's, which is captured by the sun's. And the sun's would be captured by its molecular, let's call it that way, uh, star system. Now, the ancients told us already that Sirius, the Pleiades, in particular Alcyone mm -hmm. in the Pleiades, and a few other stars, perhaps Canopus, and um, all of those stars concerning the, uh, the winter hexagonal, the, the winter hexagon, um, you know, Orion and all of those stars, they told us explicitly that our star is part of this particular star system. So stars also form molecules. You know, they gather together in groups and work mm. together, mm. as are the molecules of our bodies. Mm. You know, we are made up of atoms. Our body is, is called anatomy. Well, if the word atom is not hiding in the word anatomy, <laughs> and what is an atom? Well, in Egypt they call that one atum, the unit, the indivisible one. And so these units of atom, of energy, are nothing but light. They are toroidal units of spiralling energy. And so all that we see, whether it's considered to be liquid, solid or gas, is pure energy in motion. Walter Russell said that those elements, those so-called elements and... and um, particles and everything, that's just energy in motion. In fact, the periodic table tells you that because it tells you the vibration of each one. It starts with hydrogen, goes all the way to plutonium, and it gives you the vibration of them and it, that proves that they are just vibrations. Mm -hmm. So we are describing vibrations when we talk about gold mm -hmm. and silver and hydrogen and nitrogen and phos phos uh, phosphorus and, and potassium. Mm -hmm just vibrations. The corporate person is just a mask. Mm. This is why the scriptures say, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, mm. because your word is your bond. Mm. You see, and in, 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 and in law, it's your word. It, those pieces of paper mean nothing mm. in a court of law. It's mm. your word. Yeah, I even got a, uh, um, a reading from a, an I Ching uh, reading, uh, and, it, and it told me meditation brings peace but it, it does not remove the necessity for choice and action. Uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to sit in there and bliss out, uh, and it does bring peace, it's got, it's got its effect, but if you don't come out and take the action, what's the point of it? Uh, we're here to act, and we could quote many spiritual texts, even the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, karma, the, the karma yoga is a yoga of action, and instead of getting attached to the result, um, according to the Bhagavad Gita, is you devote those actions to Krishna. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so you're using your vehicle in a correct way. So your actions are in harmony with what you learnt in meditation. It's like a car. You know, you might have a Ferrari, all right, but it's no use if you don't put the key in and turn the key. Hmm. It's the key that yeah. matters. You hold the key, you can make that car do a lot of things. But if you don't get out of first gear, if you don't know how to get out of first gear, see, there's a lot of misuse of vehicles. There's a lot of use, misuse of these bodies. We have these bodies. Mm. Okay, mine may last 80, 90 years, I don't know. Mm. Um, they've got their certain duration. Um, but how am I using this vehicle? Is the vehicle being used in harmony with my words? Mm. So, you know, am I walking the talk? And so, when you go into meditation, like you said, you, you find many treasures and uh, clarities, clarifications and awakenings. But, okay, and you bliss out. All that's nice, wonderful. All right, but then you, you step out your door and you're angry and aggressive and cursing people and totally not living in harmony with your talk. Now... We're all guilty of this. I'm not saying, hey, look at me, don't throw stones because I'm perfect. Um, you know, but this is what we need to look at. We have the spiritual part that's driving us 
and we have this physical part that practically gets along and does things, are we misusing this vehicle? Because any judge in any court can tell whether you are or not. Mm. Give you a small example. I really enjoyed being, being uh, in the cell. You know? I really enjoyed those <laughs> nine days. I'll tell you, I learned so much. This is one thing I learned. Mm. I respected the, um, the policeman and I got respect back. Mm. And all the other young and older ones that have been in and out of prison all their lives uh, lacked in respect. And their motto was, the only good policeman is a dead policeman, mm. which I tried to correct them on. Mm. And I said, guys, you must understand that there is the policeman who will protect and there is the police officer who has got other things to carry out. Mm -hmm. He's a policy enforcer. And you're confusing the two. These are our brothers. Yes, some of them are very, very arrogant. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? All they're interested in is doing their job. If you respect them because they're doing their job, they will carry out their duties also with respect. So really, I cannot complain about any of the treatment I got. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great learning curve. And this is, this is the, the point of all of, the, all of this is how you see things and how you interact with your vehicle. So I lived in harmony with my talk. My talk is to show love to all the brothers because they know not what they are doing. Remember Jesus said, forgive them, Father, forgive them, yeah. for they know not what they are doing. You know, I've had my brother-in-law come to my house to abuse me about what I'm doing, that it's so wrong and, and it's, 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 he told me all the reasons and I tried lovingly to show him how wrong he was. But he walked out and said, I don't want to hear a bar of this. And he was convinced in all of his ignorance that I was wrong in what I was doing. And so, you know, you're not going to be able to uh, convince anybody with any words. You will only be able to convince people of that nature with actions. And so what I offer is my example, my actions, as, you know, as an offering for... Um, for people to take, uh, you know, as a model, ultimately it will be uh, the model for other people to um, act upon, mm -hmm. because it's the lawful model. Just on on that point, um, a quote from uh, one of the spiritual books is: "Let up, let other people have their beliefs. Say what you think, but don't make others wrong. Don't disagree with them. Just say what you know is true in a nice way, and then back off. Never confront." Uh, that comes from a Course in Miracle commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that makes perfect sense to me. It's, it's their free will if, if, if they want to put up a barrier. And it, it's none of our business, really, um, to smash down that barrier. But we might offer information um, peacefully uh, and recognise them uh, as um, also spiritual beings uh, in a, in a temporal kind of matrix, and maybe they, I don't know, maybe they're stuck or something. Um, True. But um, I could move on to say a, a final kind of question, uh, and, and that is, uh, and to sum all this up, is what is, you know, in terms of the, the three tools of creation, vision, uh, passion and action, uh, what is the vision of, of Santos? Uh, where do you want to see all this go? Uh, in, in, in full clarity, because the clearer it is um, on a collective basis, uh, the more it'll just go that direction. My vision is to fulfil what's in the heart of each and every one of us, which is to have freedom, mm -hmm. peace, loving environment, health, happiness. This has been a childhood... Um, vision that I've always had. Mm. Uh, I just said this the other day, you know, we we're talking about Armageddon, you know, and, um, and as, as you and I know that the corruption is, is about to fail. Mm. 
because we have universal help now on this planet and a great awakening and responsible people are coming forward to bring about that change. So, so I was saying yesterday that, um, isn't it funny, when I was a churchgoer, in the literal paradigm, I was waiting for the end in Armageddon and I was preaching it. In fact, I was very, very zealous. As a Jehovah's Witness, I was a regular pioneer, knocking you know, 90 hours a month devoted to. Yeah. I did that for years. Um, and preaching Armageddon, that God's kingdom and paradise would come on this earth. Mm. Now that I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, <clears throat> of course, but I am enlightened beyond their scope, I don't want to be <clears throat> derogatory in any way toward that organisation. Um, although it is dealing with mind control purely, uh, maybe for the good of those individuals in there because it was for the good of me. Uh, 20 years of being a Jehovah's Witness, I studied my Bible. I tell you, if you look at my Bible, you would think it was just a piece of rubbish because it's got annotations all the way through it. It is, it is so... Um, it's falling apart. Because being a literal church-going type was a kind of a punishment and like a purgatory, which benefited me. It may not benefit other individuals, so that's not the point. The point is how you come out of it. And now that my scope is way beyond their limited scope, I'm still waiting for that vision to be fulfilled, for this Armageddon. And um, all Armageddon is, is just, you know, a meeting of opposite divided parts so that they can uh, once again be reunited, really. Mm -hmm. And we're going through that, George. Um, my vision is the same as your vision, ultimately. Mm -hmm. All we require is Sat, Chit, Ananda. Mm -hmm. Consciousness, bliss and existence. And that's all your heart requires, that's all my heart requires, and all of that will be fulfilled. Mm. Paradise is not beyond our reach. Mm. Well, even apoc apocalypse is, it's not what the common person thinks it is. Uh, it's not an arm again, it, it's a revealing. A revealing. Yeah. It is. So bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Yeah, we should never fear what's coming. We have created what's coming. Mm. We, we are the co-creators. This is another empowering truth that um, would benefit mankind immensely to realise that you are participating in all the changes. Mm. When, when they tell you, the system tells you that you can make a difference, vote for us, we can make some change. That's just a cheap motto that they don't even understand themselves. Mm. They're talking about force as opposed to power. And no one needs to tell you that you can make a difference. If someone's telling you that you can make a difference, they're trying to sell you something. It's all to go away. Because we should know that we are the difference. And only the difference. All our contributions make everything change in the universe. That's how powerful we are as divine units of light. Mm. All right, I think we've covered a fair bit. Um, and we could probably conclude with that. Um, I think I think we've, we've all summed it all up. <laughs> There's nothing really further to cover for the moment. Not really. That's yeah, that's yeah. succinctly what um, what I'm doing, mm. what I'm speaking, and what I'm acting upon. That's my way. I do not impose that on anyone else. Yeah. I follow it myself because I have acknowledged it to be the way. Yeah. For how can how can I um, be in Ur if I follow the path of love and show love, God is love? If I seek to be enlightened, I only want to know truth. I only want to be enlightened and conscious. I want to be conscious of everything as much as I possibly can. I shun ignorance and walk away from it. Mm. 
which is truly, really the only evil that exists really, ignorance mm. and willful, mm. stubborn ignorance. Mm. You know, this attitude of, oh, I was born a Catholic and I will die a Catholic and, and all of that other stuff that people, you know, cherish, their opinions, yeah. you know. None of that, just knowledge, true knowledge. How can you err? How can you err? Mm. You know, God is light. God is truth, love, power, wisdom. That's all I want. I want to be a philosopher, a lover of wisdom. Because why? Because I lack wisdom. How do I get wisdom? Acquiring knowledge, turning every stone. You see, some churches tell you, oh, don't read their books. Theirs are wrong. Ours are correct. And every church is doing this. And there's thousands of them doing that. Well, I turn every stone, which means sometimes I find a lot of untruth, which I just need to mm. discard. Mm. But I'm searching truth, finding truth, and applying it. One cannot err. Mm. This is the path of the universe. And for your protection and for anyone else's protection, in all humbleness, and that provides that protection, um, even though it, it seems like an impossible task, uh, that protection will be made available. If one lives according to their spoken word, mm. they will always be protected. They will always yeah. be protected. Yeah. One, thing, one thing I witnessed was a great protective hand mm. over me in all of my trials. In every trial that I've, that I've ever had mm. and ordeal, I've always witnessed a protective hand. Now, who is that protective hand? Well, ultimately, it's you in your higher capacity. Yeah. You from the causal plane. Yeah. And what does you want for you in the effect plane? All good. And so, and so one who, who seeks the good is going to find the good, ultimately. And he will also be able to commune with God, the good, which is the higher self. Mm. Now, churches are foremost in teaching that the higher self is the devil. Why? Because the Greeks called it the daemon. Mm. And the daemon has to do with your individuality, not your lower personality, mm. your higher ego. And so churches have confused this and they've said, oh, it's demons, oh, he's talking to demons. No, you're talking to the daemon, which is your higher self. And it's the denial of this higher self that's caused all of the problems of humanity because rather than consulting and communing with this one that cares for you more than anyone else, mm. we go off to priests and clergy and, and experts and doctors of uh, theological law, etc. And they are only there to deceive. So the answers lie within. The kingdom of God is in you, the kingdom of good. So why don't we consult it in meditation? And it's your higher self being loyal to you all the time. It will never abandon you. And if you walk your walk, you will see that protection. You will witness it everywhere you go because it is the witnesser. It's the one that's witnessing this conversation. There is, there, is, there is an entity that is witnessing this con con, uh, conversation and it is mm. your and my mind because the mind is not a physical organ. The brain is yeah. and the brain works with the mind yeah. but the mind is the whole body and outside of the body. It's the whole energy that you bring in your toroidal vortex. Yeah. All right. What should we do? We shall say, peace, brother, and um, only the good shall come from our good actions. We will witness that. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.